Customers frequently uh, come to us and want a little more clarity on margin. Margin runs a, a few different ways, uh, depending on what type of trader you are, whether you're a swing trader, overnight trader, day trader. Uh, margin means different things. There are reduced margins for intraday traders, and there are full exchange margins for folks that hold positions overnight. Margin creates a leverage, and a leverage allows traders to control a large portion of a futures contract with relatively small initial investment. As a result, even small changes in the underlying price can lead to significant gains or losses. Futures margin is the amount of money that a trader must deposit with their broker to open and maintain a position in a futures contract. It serves as a security deposit to ensure that the trader can cover potential losses, enabling traders to take on larger positions than they could with their own capital alone. So here's an example. Let's look at the mini S&Ps. And we talk about the mini S&Ps as a trader, you can be an intraday trader, you can hold the position overnight. We're gonna break it down into the day trade. So you'll notice there are three different types of margin. Day traders only need to be concerned with the day margin, which is set by your broker. We'll explain the other two in a little more detail a little later on. So in this example, a day trader must keep in their account balance at or above $500 to control one ES contract. If you open an account with $2,000, you could reliably put on a four contract order when you open up a position. The problem with that is that once the market ticks away from you, you are now under margined and a number of things could happen and neither of them are very good. Let's go back to the $2,000 example and the margin's $500. You would have $1,500 of adverse market movement before a position needed to be removed. Let's say you've got $2,000, you buy a position, the market moves up 10 points, that's $50 a point, you've made $500 and now your account balance is $2,500. You've offset your position. You can put on five positions the next time if you wanted to, but not recommended. That's in a nutshell, really quickly, day trade margin. You should probably talk to your broker if you want a little more clarity about better ways to manage your money rather than maximize your leverage. Because if you maximize your leverage, you're gonna maximize the potential for greater losses. Notional value is the total value of the leveraged position in a futures contract. It represents the full market value of the underlying asset that the futures contract controls. To calculate notional value, we take the contract's multiplier of $50 and multiply it times the S&P index price or value. So if the S&P is trading at 5,500, we multiply that times 50. The notional value is $275,000, a little greater than a quarter of a million dollars. That's rather astounding. That's an example of when we apply the day trading margin of extreme leverage. You're putting up only $500 to control $275,000 worth of an asset. Let's talk a little bit about the difference in, in, in margin. There's an initial margin requirement and there's a maintenance margin requirement for those people who hold positions past the close or going into the weekend. Past the close would be five o'clock Eastern for the mini S&P, for gold products, for crude, for currencies, many other products as well. Other markets are gonna have different hours and gonna close a little bit earlier. If you're gonna be a swing trader or position trader, you will need to at least maintain the maintenance, but you will need to have the initial margin requirement in your account to establish the position. So in the mini S&P contract, that dollar value is $15,130 currently. That can change. The exchange is in charge of those numbers and they communicate swiftly to all the clearing firms and brokers out there whenever they make these changes. So you'll always be in the know and if there's an increase, your broker will probably give you a call, send you a text or an email to notify you of such change. And the maintenance margin is set by the exchange. The initial margin is 110% of the maintenance margin. Again, these numbers are created by the exchange through mathematical formulas, volatility scans for each market. So as market prices get higher, as has been the case with the stock indexes, margin rates are higher. And those will also impact the margin rate for the day traders from time to time. 
We also increase the margins when there are special reports that come out. For instance, the monthly non-farm payroll, we oftentimes increase the day trading margin to 100% of the initial margin requirement. One of the main reasons is because there's less volume when those reports come out an hour before the New York Stock Exchange opens. These are after hours reports, economic data that comes out that impacts not only the price of these securities, but also our economy as a whole. As a result of that, we want to make sure that everybody is protected. So deep pockets are really important to be able to trade some of these products. And remember, notional value is $275,000, $15,000 falls within that, you know, 6 to 12% of, of the value range for a margin requirement. If you have a margin call, I would want you to, to reach out to your broker and have a discussion uh, about the ways that you can address the margin call. You can take care of them typically by either sending more money in, by liquidating a position, or by spreading off in a different market, thereby reducing the overall initial margin requirement, which will give you the opportunity to uh, think a little bit more about your strategy to maintain this position if that's so is desired. There are concentrated position requirements too. And a concentrated position would be, let's say you've got a $100,000 account and you've got six e mini s and ps in there and no diversification of your assets into any other asset category like bonds or gold or silver or crude oil, soybeans, corn, any of those things. And so now you've got a concentrated position. So all of your capital is involved in that one market. There is a premium that's added to your initial margin requirement, and it's usually up to the individual broker of 10 to 25 to 50 percent if you're concentrated, particularly during volatile times. Volatility, there are many different measures. You know, the S&Ps, for instance, today uh, had a 100-point range. That's a $5,000 range, 100 point times 50 is $5,000. So we had a $5,000 range and a product that has an initial margin requirement of $15,130. And imagine if you've got that $500 day trading margin requirement, uh, how much havoc that could play or or how much of a reward that would reveal for you. Now, if you have any questions about about margining uh, day, overnight, you know, really rely on your broker. They'll be able to uh, communicate to you a little more clearly uh, so and spend time with you so you can understand a little more closely uh, how best to, to manage your trades uh, and the leverage that, uh, that the futures industry provides.